What is up my G's, how are you doing today? It is your boy Mies Bay back with more seasonal episode reviews and today we're going to be talking about ZOM 100 episodes 7, is it episode 6 and 7 that I believe for the most part. Um, I know by the time this recorded, six, episode 6 is already out, we'll probably save it for next week or upload that at another, po- at another point as soon as I catch up because we got a lot on our plate to talk about right now so let's just focus on what we can for now so let's talk about episode six so episode six starts off uh pretty silly in the kind of the goofy main as our main characters uh akira and Ketchon are both kind of shopping around for stuff like they were in previous episodes this time one of the things that Akira wanted to get off of his list was he wanted to get a gold watch. And he found one, and they were taking pictures of all the fancy stuff and all like that. So they're it was, good. It was funny. Not good it, it, nature, but how goofy of, they are in this time where everyone's like, you know, dying and there's an apocalypse happening and zombies are walking to earth. Um, but when they return to their little porch um, on top, they kind of do realize that like they're running out of water, the cell reception's starting to die. There's a lot of things that aren't happening, which means that either that a lot of people in tokyo are either already turned to zombies died somehow or have this whatever survivors may have already left so there's probably not that many people there so they probably have to you know they have to start moving because realistically they can't stay in that spot forever i mean i mean they could have they really really tried hard enough but it's not the being on top of a roof like that is probably not the most ideal place especially when you get into structural damage and anything that could happen and all that shit it's probably just not the safest place to be at so it makes sense that they would start moving um so what they decide to do is get an rv which is you know it's the smart thing to do it's like it's a traveling home so you can move place to place um if need be in the safety it's small so you might try to protection from cars and other thing like that but it's fine um but guess who else should think of be getting an rv other than um i forgot her name but um Ooh, give me a minute. I have to figure out her name. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's Shizuka, the girl that we've followed for the last couple of episodes that will eventually join their crew. That do, that do join the crew today, is Shizuka. Um, they once again after the whole you know zombie shark episode, you know they said like oh who knows when we'll meet each other again, pretty soon after. Um, I don't know how much time passes between the zo- the episode with the zombie shark and this episode, but they do meet each other fairly quickly for the most part um and she again akira is trying to get her to pair up with them she's again refusing and she's like yeah you're just like not the optimal person like don't get me wrong i'm grateful for what you did back at the aquarium but you're just still not the op- optimal person and you're very reckless and i'm trying to be safe and so catch on and she's lucky while akira's be you know being distraught in the back um are talking about plans and all that being like oh you're getting an rv that's pretty good deal where you plan on going she's like tokyo she's not safe anymore so i need to start getting on the move and she actually brings up that she doesn't drive that um so i think either she doesn't have a license or she doesn't have a lot of experience so driving an rv would be new to her this is where catch on and akira actually finally get her on her side because they actually bring up a fairly good point saying hey um it's, uh she's Oh my god, she's a <laughs> she's hey, she's a monkey. Um, don't you think it's not optimal for you to drive when you don't really know how to drive, more or less drive something as big as an RV? Meanwhile, my boy Kira here, oh, he knows how he knows how to drive all stuff, stuff, motorcycles, trucks, all that thing. You know, if you're paired up with us, you wouldn't have to worry about the driving aspect. If not, you got an experienced driver, and unfortunately. Well, she doesn't, doesn't want to be in groups. She doesn't admit that being in a small group um, is perfectly fine as long as it's the three of them. And having someone that does know how to drive is optimal. So they do. So she finally does give in and officially join the group in this capacity. So they're all looking for the, uh, an RV and stuff like that. And obviously, Akira and Ketchan are being their, you know, I don't want to say childish, but they're being their their dumb selves in the sense of like they're looking for the most luxurious, the most outstanding RV. They're finding RVs that have like beds and like little jacuzzis and like are like maxed out to the to the brim with all these like accessories that they really don't need. We're, meanwhile, Shuzumaki looks for or finds a truck that is like pretty optimal. I mean, I wouldn't say it's the best optimal. It just looks like a regular pickup truck. I probably would have gone for like 
a proper regular RV, which getting ahead of ourselves, they do get eventually. Um, but while, she, while Shizumaki is arguing with Ketchahan and Akira, she actually sees an RV that she personally likes herself. It's got like, it's like a, it's like a, it has a palette, a color palette of like really dark colors. There's no direct light or stuff like that. It, it's like something that she desires like so much. Cause she's like, everything looks so good and fantastic and amazing. And catch on the camera and I was just like, I oh, see you want some stuff. You want it, you want it, you know, you want it. We can go get it if you want. Cause it can make you happy if you want. Um, but they obviously make a lot of noise. So they end up attracting a bunch of zombies. So they just have to pick one out of random and basically book it out of town. Um, so they're kind of describing where to go to next. I think Akira brings up the fact that he wants to go see his parents. Um, I forget where that location is. Um, I don't think, I think Shuzumaki is just trying to find the most safe and honorable place. Um, and meanwhile, I think Akira and Shuzumaki are both in the RV and Ketchan's just outside in the motorcycle just driving right now. Um, so while they're planning, trying to figure out stuff, they end up um, running through some road spikes. And they're kind of confused because they're like, who the fuck would set up road spikes in a situation like this? Lo and behold, they see a whole bunch of trucks and buses come through, blocking the, making a blockade in the freeway that they were driving on. And so they get concerned. They think it's an ambush. They think that, like, you know, it happened. A rival group either tries to mug them. And I initially thought that, too. Then we see who's leading the group. And it's none other then akira's old boss and we're gonna call him chief because i don't remember if they call him they call him by his name or they use his name at all but they they just call, we're just gonna call him chief so the chief is actually leading this band of like baseball players i don't know if i don't know if like they were baseball players or if like they just happened to just find some baseball outfits and they're wearing all the baseball gear and stuff like that but Basically, he made this blockade to fuck up their tires and then be like, oh, you guys look like you're in a bunch of distress, like your tires broken because uh, Ketchum was on a motorcycle. He ran through the spikes and he ate complete shit, like terrible, terrible shit. So he ran through being completely decimated. Um, so he's just like, oh, I could help you take care of your friends and stuff like that. Meanwhile, Kira's just having this huge panic attack of just like, what, what do I do? What options do I what, have? Like, I thought I got away from this and now here's my boss. Um, but his boss is offered to help. He's like, you know what? We got a camp. It's full of food, full of water. It's safe. We got it all prepared. It's all zombie free. You guys can come take, um, like, recover take yourself for two days we even got medicine for your boy to take care of if he needs it it's like oh wait we like like y'all help us seriously it's like yep but in exchange you're gonna work for my company and let me just bring let me just say how greedy how insanely greedy it is for someone during a zombie apocalypse to make a company <laughs> i don't even know what the company is i don't even know where he's delivering to but he somehow has a place where he's making some sort of revenue or he's doing something it's super weird i don't understand it but you know it's the tires they probably could have get, gotten away with but it's definitely more of the sake for um catch on since catch on was bleeding he seemed like he had a couple of broken ribs maybe a concussion Akira was, oh, not Akira, Ketchum was definitely the more pressing issue seeing as he was like beating profusely and took a lot of damage from, you know, going over road spikes with a damn motorcycle, which is just a, ter just a terrible thought in itself. Um, but they eventually make their way to like the safe camp and basically he gets put to work pretty fast for the most part. Um, Ketchum and Ketchan and Shizumaki, they're kind of talking. Akira being, um, Akira, damn it. No, not Akira. Ketchan being like, oh, I can't believe, like, you know, I, if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have to go through this and it's on Chief. And they're like, don't worry, it's for two days, so we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it as much as I can. And then it cuts to, I think it's sometime during like the daytime or like late afternoon, where we see um, Akira working with all the people that also owe the Chief um, in, in some way, shape, or form working moving boxes doing all this stuff and he's just like he's just like lamenting just of how just terrible it is that he has to work again in these are apocalyptic he has to get away but he tries to make the best of it for the most part and what he does is that he finds some of the beer that's around some of the warm beer that's just kind of been left away and still standing and he decides to um try and chill it try and like put it in the fridge fridge so once they're done with work they can have some cold beer 
Um, the chief walks in finding this, and he's pissed. He's just like, who the fuck do you think you are coming here, putting your beer, your disgusting beer, in my fridge? This is my fridge, and that is my beer, how dare you? But some of the people who are in the baseball uniforms, which you can tell who's important and not by, they wear, the important people have civilian clothes, and then there's the people that are close to him that he can manipulate more that are in the baseball uniforms. So they walk in, and they're surprised, like, oh, wait, you got, um, you got us all cold beers? Oh, dude, you never give us the cold stuff. And like, you know, to put on face, the chief goes and he's like, oh, of course, of course. You guys have been doing such a good th job lately. I thought I'd go ahead and like get the beers for you. We're going to celebrate my old co-worker um, surviving the apocalypse and, and coming to our camp. And we're going to have a big feast and big party for them. And so that's what he plays it off like that. And then he goes being like, yeah, don't you? He's like, great. Now I got to fucking waste my beer just to fucking keep up beer. you stupid bitch. And then he basically goes on to basically explain him just like, don't think y'all high and mighty now. You're a worthless piece of shit. And right now you're as worthless as the fucking the zombies. They're nothing but equipment. So if you want to keep, you know, you want to make sure you want to prove yourself, make sure you're not as useless as those zombies out there. And right now they're doing more work than you are. And this is obviously brings him down, makes him feel depressed. Um, cuts back to um, Ketchon and Shizumaki taking care of each other and they've been like, oh, around the background Shizumaki has been aware of, of seeing um, how that she's been treating Akira and how just like bad and terrible it's been. It's been like an awful ride and and, it's, and like Ketchon doesn't really understand why he's doing it like he's sitting there, he's like, I don't understand why like he's taking all this, I don't understand why he's like accepting it, like he's not at work anymore and uh, Shizumaki basically explains like it's just it's just fear. It's just something that like you you know so well that you know so well and you're so conditioned to that like once you just put back into that scenario, it's almost like you snap back to real snap back to reality into the same position again, which is like it was very depressing to think about. It's like yeah, it's crazy how like you could take somebody out of a bad situation and they could start getting good, start getting better, only for them to be once they get put back in any form of situation that puts them back in that, they almost just snap right back into being like not good, which is like really depressing and really sh really shitty in a way when you think about it. It's just how all that goes. It's, it's not fun. It's, it's not fun at all. Uh, but that was episode six. Um, I think it was good. Um, it was it wasn't as great as like the last one or a couple of ones, but obviously we're getting we're getting to it. I get it. This is kind of like the last thing it's it's kind of like the hurdle he has to go over because if obviously if he doesn't do that then he can't really progress i get the por i get the purpose of it um i think the next episode's a bit better because in um well hold on. <laughs> let me let me still talk about episode six before we get into episode seven but yeah i liked episode six it was a fun it was a fun ride it was fun they they did what they needed to to do for it and i get the progression for for what it is um i think seeing that is just like visually cool or, or just like visually compelling um i wish they did more in episode seven but we'll we'll get into that we'll get into that so episode seven um first of all i think they like changed the opening a bit so what i mean by this it's like the opening for the most part was it would start off with like I think it would start off like with, with a zombie chase or some other stuff. Um, then it would show like the last episode clips, right? So it'd be a mantra of all the stuff that happened last episode. But this episode, the opening was more of the opening was more of a collage of the last like six episodes that have been happening, basically giving us like a weird musical update and visually of just how been, how things have been going on since the apocalypse started back in the first episode, um, which I thought is cool. It changed it up a little bit, it made it feel like um, we're like and like we're entering a new part of the story. Which, to be fair, after this one, we sh we should be. I thought we were going to two episodes ago, but it seems like we are because I think it was the. Aquarium episode where it felt like they were just going to leave right then and there, but obviously there's this episode. And to be fair, they 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 were the last two episodes. This is the only hard we go. We're getting over. Um, but this episode basically starts off um, with the little like celebration that the chief was trying to celebrate for Akira friends and all of that coming. Um, little do we know that of course Akira's still having to work during this whole celebration thing, having to help get drinks and all that. Um, there's a scene where, like, 
he used to bring in a drinks to a couple of guys and they spell they just treat him almost almost as badly as the chief has been treating him um and she's a just looking up over this and just like kind of just shaking her head and like some form of like disappointment in a sense um but then the chief sees that she's like you know by herself um as like this older lady's like pouring her beer and it sucks because she asked to get his beer poured and then she comes pours the beer and she sm he smacks it out of her hands like i don't want beer from you you're an old hag and i'm just like that's kind of fucking mean you dick but then she he wants suzumaki to do it and surprisingly what i thought was going to happen was suzumaki standing up and it being a whole problem and shit like that what we actually see is suzumaki following the orders now to be fair it could be one of those smart things of just like let's just get through the two days let's just do what he says and it's fine and it's like whatever um but it was still weird that like she had like some pushback but not really like he she she basically called him over poured a drink and then she all he offered her a drink which she chugged down like a fucking champ mind you i don't even know if she drinks alcohol like that but she just chugged it down like a fucking champ and then he was going up being like, oh, you know, you're doing the, like, just the, like, weird creepy boss thing. Like, hey, you need to, like, loosen up, you know? More people will like you if you seem, like, more outgoing and more open and shit like that. Um, Akira comes by. Akira, no, uh, the chief calls Akira over to give him a, a, a bottle, only for it to be empty. He's berating him again, once again. Um... And all that shit, and I was uh, honestly, I was actually wrong, and uh, I, I realized I wanted to do something with the seventh episode, and wanted to talk about one particular part and then another particular part without bouncing around. So, I'll, I'll do, I'll do that. I'll talk about what else, the whole kind of thing that the episode bounces around, and then we'll come back to the main story. So, what we realize is that. Shizumaki, at least in her past, actually had kind of a similar style in the sense of not feeling wanted or feeling well or feeling like she could do much in her life, but in an earlier age. Because we actually find out, and this was actually early in the episode, so my apologies for forgetting this, but we actually find out that she comes from like a wealthy family, because there's but there's a scene where she's like walking through the rain by herself, sees a dog that was left out, and then tries to take the dog home in order to you know talk with the dad and stuff like that but the dad being like you can't pick up the weak because the weak are going to bring you down you should only surround yourself with being strong and if you're not around strong then you make yourself stronger basically in this in the time basically the mentality of like the weak will always be weak but the strong would always be strong and so don't ever be weak you just need to be strong you just need to be strong and you need to just follow my orders and do what I say. The, the, definitely the dad of like, I know what's best for you. You don't know what you want. I know what you want. And so I'm going to tell you what you want. And obviously, it, um, it just gets to like really fucked and mean situations um, where she's trying to hide the dog to make her feel better because he didn't want the dog to die. But then one day, so she's like trying to take care of the dog, trying to feed the dog. The dog doesn't want to eat. She gets kind of worried. Only for one day for her to wake up and the dog's like, now happy jumping up and stuff like that and so she's happy like i was able i was able to help somebody i was able to help the weak and the weak got better they got strong and so it was in a sense a contradiction to everything her dad everything that her dad has ever told her of just like no the weak can be strong just the weak might need some help and so I, and that's when the scene comes of telling her dad that she wants to be a doctor. And her dad shuts this down so hard. And I was so baffled by this because how many parents, how many like parents out there would have loved, would have begged for their children to be as, and to be as ambitious as Suzumaki when she was her age. For you to be at that age and want to be a doctor and be so passionate about it to be so driven by it by a certain situation of being able to nurse the weak back to health and you wanting to be a doctor after that that's like a story in the making that's like a that's like a beautiful story in the making but her dad said no you're probably gonna be working in an office you're gonna make a lot of money you're not gonna work at the and he had the goal the audacity the bombardity to be like oh yeah no doctors don't make that much what, what, what we do we make a lot bitch 
who, where, tell me where doctors don't make a lot of money. Tell me in what world, in what, in what scenario do doctors not make a lot of money? Do they not make a lot of money? Then maybe what well, you're doing, sure, but doctors still live very comfortable lives. Very, very comfortable lives, at least financially. Mentally, you see a lot of shit. I don't know. The physically, you work a lot of hours. Emotionally, yeah, whew, yeah, but financially, financially they don't have any problems unless you really fuck up right that that's like the kind of thing that we've been taught like you do not have like financial problems when you are a doctor <laughs> that is just that is just the 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 not the obvious but that is just what we've been told and what we've been seeing and what's been proven so for, it just baffled me that someone would, would would shut down their their child ever wanting to be a doctor i'm getting lost in the weeds in this because i just i had to like pause the episode because i was so baffled by this um but the last thing from this is that, you know, her her dad, like, shoots it down so bad. Um, and then they're in a limousine run where I think she's a bit older. And she's, like, you know, she's, she's like, disdained and disheartened by, like, her dad and her actions towards her. And how, like, it seems like all, she, all he cares about is not about what she wants, but what, how, how she will look and how that will affect him. And so, obviously, she, because I think there is a scene while in the limo, he literally was just like, you are a reflection of me, so how you do is a reflection of my skills in raising a child, and shit like that. Basically putting all this like unnecessary weight on the child, which is bad. And eventually she just goes into like a coping mechanism of not wanting to rebel, but being like, hey, listen, all I have to do is listen, right? Like this, of all of this will be over eventually. It'll be over eventually. It'll be done. It'll be, I'll be done. I'll be done with everything in my life and I could be what I want to be. I just need to get through this, just listen and leave and I can never talk to him ever again. So that's that whole little, the background we get for her, she's a monkey. And then cutting back to this, we get um, an episode, we get a part where, um, I think it's, it's Akira, he's like, I think he's like working overtime or some shit like that. And he's just like, shit man, like, this sucks and I don't want to, but I got to do it for a little bit. And so I'm just going to, I'm just going to push through. And so he's like, he's like pushing through, trying to do his best. Um, but I think eventually he falls and the chief is like berating him. And this was, this was so fun. Cause I, I could, I could see it too. Cause it's one of those things where you break, you just break somebody down. It's that, it's that psychological method of breaking somebody down and then building them up more towards your image, which is exactly, you know, it, which is why it was important to get Shizumaki's background, because it's basically kind of what her dad was doing to her, in a sense. Um, bringing down her dreams and then molding her into the image that he wanted. But um, the chief was basically doing the same as he berates um, Akira for, like, doing whatever the fuck he was doing. I think he, like, made a mistake when he dropped something. And he's just like, Jesus. But then twists it up and be like, well, that's why I find you so charming. Like, even though you fail, you get back up. And I love that tenacity about you. And he's, like, trying to convince him. He's like, hey, why don't you, like, why don't you stay? Like, we have all this food, all this water. It's safe in here. You Out there, you gotta make decisions. You gotta make the hard choices. But in here, you don't have to think. You just come, you just come into work you leave you have a couple of beers in the morning and you go to sleep you could easily just survive here until everything gets better back in the world and it'd be great here for you it'll be awesome for you and like it's one of those things where like he like it's going back into that cycle of like oh like right this is this is my life this like going back to the cycle of like right this is my life this is what i was told that all I got to do is just not think and work and eventually I'll have a good life. Maybe this will be how it is in the apocalypse, basically. And so while that's happening, um, before before we get into the, like the final part of it, though, eventually it cuts back to two of the like just two random of the of the baseball uniform dudes. And they're like, like joking around being like, hey, we like make sure you got everything in there and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, we wouldn't want a zombie in the back of a truck. Right. And as they slowly close the truck, there's a zombie behind the truck, which is super funny. I just so dumb, which I don't know if that was from another port or a different port. It plays into effect later in the episode or like very like a little after this in the episode and my question is a was that another port that we were seeing of a of a of a let's call it a drift a distribution center because uh i don't know what else to call it so 
was that another distribution center sending it to the distribution the distribution center that the chief and akira and Ketchan and shizumaki and everyone else was or is that the same distribution center that sent it out that's coming back because I mean, I work at a warehouse, so you, I mean, but you also don't have to work at a warehouse to understand. Someone has to, wherever that truck is going, someone has to open that truck and find a zombie. So either A, they did some shit where they had to come back around for some reason, which they don't ever explain, or two, there's another place that's like sending them this stuff, which would make the most sense, right? Which would make the most sense, but also, why'd you go and leave and then come back without opening it? What were you doing? Also, like, if you went somewhere, you would have to have hope have opened the damn truck. So what? I don't, I don't get it. Maybe, maybe it's one of the things. My the only the only other thing I could think of, right? The only other thing I could think of is that the truck that they were packing never left yet. Because I think when they were packing, it was like that same day. Um, so that truck never left that day, never left, hasn't left. So it's just been staying stationary and then they opened the truck for some fucking weird reason. I don't remember, but it just bothered me. It bothered me so goddamn much, but cutting away from all the bullshit, we get to see now where it's Akira, Ketchan, and Shizumaki on one side. And then it's the chief with all his guys on the other. And so Shizumaki basically like, okay, you know what? It's been two days. We did what you want. We, we listened to you. We followed all your demands. Thank you for fixing our car. Thank you for fixing our friend. Now we're leaving. You know, catch on to Paul and Judge and Akira being like, hey, I'm so sorry that we had to do this, but I hope that like we'll get away from this bastard. But then Akira goes towards the side of his chief and was just like, you know, I've been talking with the chief a bit and I think I might actually stay. And then... Um, you know, obviously, catch on being the one that's probably like, wait, what the fuck do you mean? Why would you want to stay? And it's like, it's like hard to make decisions out there and it's safe here. And the boss knows like what we want and what we need. Like, it'd be good. Like, it's great. And I'm like, just, I don't want to think anymore. Um, and Shizumaki at first is like, okay, you know what? I don't give a fuck. And she was just like, and she was like, wait, but we can't just leave him. It's like, if he wants to stay, he could stay. That's his choice. And I'm not going to stop him. Actually, oh, actually very very actually important important part of this actually because it does play in there is a point where shizumaki is w w walking around in the rv drops their book drops akira's bag and it opens up to his you know 100 100 100 things i want to do before i turn into a zombie type of book and it has a bunch of stuff on it and then and she's just like looking over it just kind of like giggling to herself like jesus you're such an idiot but then she does write something in the book um and so, 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 um, where am I going with this? Right. And so that plays into the current situation we're in where, you know, she's walking away saying like, you know what? If you want to, that's fine. I don't give a fuck. I don't really care. But then the chief goes off being like, see, this is why having a woman so bad around. This is why having a girl is so bad. They never know how to listen. And this stops her in her tracks because it, she's basically echoing. He's basically echoing kind of sort of what her dad was. And then it goes to Akira, basically going on this whole spiel of just like, when I met you, you were such a free bird. You were, you didn't give a hell. And this is what you wanted to get away from. You wanted to not be in this environment. And it's like, I know this is not what you want. I know this is just trauma and I understand that, but you're better than this. And like just a whole spiel. And you see everybody listening to this. You see like the people that owe the chief this. You see his own employees in the baseball suit listening to this. They're all just like kind of not resonating, but like they're listening to her. He's also, you know, calling the chief out on her bullshit. It's like, he's not a good guy. He's not trying to save you. He's just a lazy asshole who wants to profit the best way he can doing the least amount of work. He's nothing more than just a corporate guy with a no soul and just being a piece of shit. And then what she does is hand him the book and then open and then he opens the book to i think it was number 37 the last one was his tell off your jerk boss which technically he already did but it's whatever you know I, I, i'll let it pass because it was the it was the moment um i debated at first if i wanted i, I i'll bring it actually i'll bring that up once i went once everything is done once everything is done um, but it kind of steps him back into reality, the, the speech that Shizumaki gives, and the book kind of realizing, oh yeah, 
I have a goal to do. It's the end of the world. Nothing kind of matters right now. And so I have the chance to do what I want to do. I need to do what I want to do. So he kind of stepped back and he's just like, hey, chief, thank you for everything. I really appreciate it. But um, I'm going to leave. And it's like, what? But 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 like, don't you want to be around and help? It's like, nope, sorry. It's like, you're going to regret this. I'm not trying to make him feel bad. And again, I forget why, but the chief tells it one dude to like go into the back of the truck and a zombie comes out. And then now it's all pandemonium. Everyone starts panicking. The zombies that were pulling the truck before have somehow snapped off. Everyone, all the zombies are starting to get just fucking killed and uh, are killing people left and right. Um, I think it's Ketchon, Suzumaki, some other people who like climb on trucks and they're kind of trying to figure out what to do. Um, Akira on one of the trucks sees his boss just desperately trying with this i get i get it man like it's it's it'd be hard in the apocalypse man but just running like the fat lord he is just like struggling moving walking um but then you know Kara looks at the old baseball player she's like hey i need y'all to listen to me because i got a plan i got a plan that's gonna help us a lot and so his plan is to was to basically like round up a bunch of the trucks you know first of all save his boss at the first part like gee she drives them to the trucks uh, beats up one of the like drives over some of the zombies and then saves his boss as they both climb up to the truck then he calls out to the people let's call out the guys in the uniforms to like circle around the zombies to kind of like corral them into the center between the four trucks then this madman gets a flare sees one of the open pro pay tanks jumps over it and then lobs it fucking kobe style um down to the fucking for a pain tank where it just fucking where it just explodes. I know I've seen that somewhere else. I can't remember, but I have seen that somewhere else. Um, and which it does kill all the zombies though. Um, the chief just it, it blows his mind how all that happened. Um, Shizumaki and Kira share a little, you know, you know, a little type of giggle stuff like that, calling him still like a reckless card. But you know, her being happy that you know he's out of that trance, he's out of that kind of like trauma state. Um, the boss trying to, to keep her around still, but he's like, no, we're, we're going to leave now. So thank you. Bye. <laughs> so they leave. And so like, as, as he's like, okay, well, I guess it's back to the status quo with your guys, the baseball team, hearing what she called, hearing what she said about the chief and then seeing him in action, being a coward showed the baseball players that they don't want to follow him showed the other people that oh yeah we can just kind of leave and you won't do anything about it and so literally in just like a span of like five minutes the whole operation he has is gone and now it's just him in the building um i would like to see some to for the, some form of follow-up for that because i would definitely like to see what the aftermath is with the boss if they're if either like he's still there and he's just like surviving in a big place all by himself or if like you know, some other shit happened. Because, like, for the most part, he could probably survive for a good while because he still has, he still has, like, a bunch of stuff going on and stuff like that. So, I feel like it, it makes sense, right, to get some type of follow-up with some type of update, which would be nice to see for the most part. But, um, yeah, that was, um, no, 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 my bad. The last one is them just talking about where they're gonna go. And I think they do mention now they're gonna go see Akira's parents. I think that. I think they're not going to the countryside to see Akira's parents. I, 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 I pray. This is okay, there's two things that I think are gonna happen when it comes to that. Either A, Akira's parents are gonna be completely fine. The one I want, right? The one, the situation I want. Akira's parents are gonna be completely fine and they won't even know that it's happening because it, it, it's something that's happening on like the rule like on like the the metro side like the big on like the big city side and it hasn't really hit like the 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 small little villages that are outside of that are that reside in japan so everyone's gonna be like what zombie apocalypse what what are you talking about it's like do you guys not know what's going on which i i really hope because that would add that would fit in very well with just like this world and how it is and give us like just a nice heartwarming moment with his parents or two which i, f I fucking hope not oh my god the one i don't hope is like he's gonna drive up and he's gonna see his parents and they're just dead they're just dead either they're dead or they're already zombies now it'd be funny if he's like no i'm gonna spend time with my parents so that's exactly what i gotta do and they like have them chained down as he like cooks from them and does all this stuff i that <laughs> <laughs> fuck with me that'd be like this is it, this is insane i think that one would be the most entertaining but it'd still be sad and then the other one would be sad is like the parents aren't alive obviously but because of their 
arrival more zombies come and end up killing the parents which that would be that would be so fucked so that's my, that's my prediction for one of the three happening so we'll, we'll we'll see um either way i do like this episode um again like i said before it was kind of like that last hurdle he had to go through because like while he did do technically do all that stuff in the first episode there was still that lingering stuff of of him you know s still falling into that and we see that so hopefully hopefully he does hopefully he does well and and, and, and good and so I, I appreciate that it was also nice getting a little bit of shizumaki's backstory because i realized we didn't really get anything from her so i'm happy that we got more um got to understand just more how she operates due to her past and like it makes a it makes a lot of sense honestly given the way she acts and how she operates and all that shit so that was fun and i appreciate it i like this episode a lot um that is going to do it for this episode. Like I said, as of recording, there is an episode eight. We will talk about episode eight. I will just talk about that episode sometime next week. Um, I might have an also like a weekend video out. Not of this, um, but either something, something more substantial, like an actual proper video and not just one of these un very lately edited discussion videos, which is, you know, how it's been for a while. Um, also, just as a heads up to everyone, I don't think I'll be doing live streams for a while. Or at least, like, I won't be doing, like, the episode live streams. I'll still live stream on Twitch and stuff like that, but, um, just the live stream things. I, I've realized, what I've realized is we have, is that there will be some overlap for a lot of things. And so there might be times where it does, um, it seems fine and there's some where it might not. I, and to be fair... I'm mostly doing it during just to living situations and whatnot. I have no idea how the fuck it's going to turn out within the next two, three months. But for this fall season that's coming up, which I will make a fall season video um, as to what I'm watching, what we're going to talk about on the channel, yada, yada, yada. Um, I will make a big video like that. So watch out for that. I'll hopefully work it in on it within the next week. And that will be good. I'll have it out either... I'll have it out by next weekend. Not this upcoming weekend, but sometime by next weekend. But um, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you liked it. Um, leave a comment in the video whether you liked about episode 6 or 7 of Zom 100. Um, and if you want more content, subscribe to the channel. I would really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys within the next video. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta go do what I gotta do. See ya.